what I remember about CBGB's. 500 sweating bodies ankle deep in beer, smell of piss, screaming amplifiers. That was CBGB's on a Saturday night in the mid 70s. CBGB's as a venue was a platform for a lot of up and coming artists. CBGB's gave us a home, a place to work out our music without any sense of pressure. CBGB's is, uh, uh, was a proving ground for a lot of the punk slash new wave groups. CBGB stands for Country Bluegrass Blues. To put labels on the kind of music played at CBGB's is difficult. And the club itself was so out of the mainstream that the band there had time to develop their idiosyncratic visions. The venue itself was always dark, sweat-soaked, and smoky to me. I'd just like to say this gig sucks! Started CBGB's back in um, December of 73. When I started CBGB's, I didn't intend to do uh, what I finally ended up doing. I had a feeling for music. When I started doing country bluegrass blues, there was nobody else doing that. In fact, there were hardly any clubs that were operating at that point in this area. The environment at CBGB's, I would say, was uh, rough. The Bowery was not the most pleasant place to be. The Bowery in the 70s was a dump. There was a lot of flop houses. A lot of derelicts, lost souls, whatever they were. They had thousands of them. People looking to get high, get laid. Pokers and pimps and junkies. Probably about 50 or 60 of them along the Bowery, as well as having these Bowery bars, which catered to the derelicts. So this was what was happening here. All the bands at CB's were not so much bands, but individual ideas. We are blind. I hate people when not blind. None of the bands were known. Uh, some artists with talent. Some with absolutely no talent, but certainly a lot of attitude. The bands were very different from each other. And if they had a sense of punk about it, it was more attitude. I was interested in supporting music that reflected uh, what the individual felt in music. For us, that was extremely important in giving us the confidence to move forward. There was a look, there was a style, there was a very specific sound. The atmosphere within the club once the band was playing was high-powered energy. And for us, getting to play four nights a week for nearly two months, we were able really to understand the movement of our music, to watch it change and grow. It was a very close and tight-knit support group. Patty Smith had been a poet. I was running after you for a long time. People idolized her. I was watching you for, actually I've watched you for a long time. Patty was, uh, was the punk poet. I can leap up and scream. I can put my fist up in the air. I don't give it. A leader like Patty, you have that potential because she's many different people, all in one human animal. She had a following of people who knew her and idolized her as a poet. I like to see the edges, the bottom of it get all wet when you walk in near the water there. 
Of course, Lenny had been a rock writer. The music, however, that made me want to pick up a guitar was the folk music of the early 1960s. And But by the time I finally actually got a guitar in my hand, the Beatles had appeared on Ed Sullivan, and I quickly switched my direction. It was just myself on guitar and Richard Soule on piano and Patty. We played perhaps once a month, opening up various folk artists around New York. We had kind of a, a poetry, art, cabaret type of act. They played at Max's first, the two of them, and then they came here with their van. Until the spring of 75, where we played seven straight weeks. At seven weeks, yeah. Four nights a week, two sets a night, for, and it lasted seven weeks. Though I always think of that club as the place where we really were able to understand what we were doing. And uh, we improvised poetry and segued rock songs that we found that the only way we can function as a band is by not defining who we are. Uh, we'd like to be really loud and brutal. And then for the next song, we'd like to bring it back and do something with a great deal of fragility, uh, where our hearts are resting firmly upon uh, our shoulders. We believe in the power of rock and roll to be art. She was a catalyst for other bands that came after him. Uh, Patty always has uh, a motto. It's progress isn't the future, it's keeping up with the present. 